These two here, my friends, are anamorphic adapters. This one is by Moment, and this one is by Suray. We're gonna be seeing what these anamorphic adapters do, if they're actually worth your money, and should you even just get a regular anamorphic lens? Let's get into the video. We've got a lot to get into. What's going on, my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this Moment adapter and seeing if it's actually worth it or not. Now, be sure the timestamps are below because there's a few technical things that we need to go through first to really see if this is going to work within your workflow. And then we can talk a little bit more about the image results and the quality of this lens. Before we dive deep into this video, we have to talk about the versatility of owning something like this. It's really exciting because this is the Helios 44-2 with the Moment anamorphic lens on the front. You can turn any one of your lenses into technically an anamorphic lens just by screwing this onto the front. So that is extremely exciting and gives you so much more flexibility than just owning one single anamorphic lens. Now the guys out at Try and Buy it actually sent me this one to review. So thank you to them, but they're not paying me to make this video. And I can pretty much say whatever I want, which is great. Uh, because I wanna keep this as unbiased as possible. And if this thing is actually going to be worth your money at the end of the day. Now, some of the things that we do have to cover first is what you can actually utilize this on. Now, one of the minor cons is that you can only use it from 50 millimeters and above when it comes to full frame. When it comes to APS-C, same thing, it's 50 millimeter full frame equivalent. So it's a 35 millimeter and above lens uh, because you will get some pretty harsh vignetting on the corners because the image image circle just isn't large enough to go for those wide angle lenses. So that is a little bit of a con to start off with. So you can't do really wide angle anamorphic shots. It's generally 50 millimeters and above. So really nice portrait lenses, which uh, is a bit of a pro because you get some incredible looking depth of field. So now when it comes to what you get actually in this little package here, it is an actual nice sort of hard felt case, which is great, but you do actually get three little adapters and these are step down rings. So you can adapt it to a 72 millimeter front filter thread, a 77 and an 82. So it is a step down ring. So essentially if your lens is an 82 millimeter front filter thread, you put the 82 to 67 and it screws directly on the front, which is amazing. I absolutely love that. And then obviously if there's anything from 67 and below, you just use regular step up rings. But my experience with some of these is that you need to try and keep this as physically as close to the front lens element as possible because what you're going to be doing is you're gonna screw this directly on the front and you're gonna be setting your lens directly to infinity focus. And then once that's set to infinity focus, you focus directly with this anamorphic adapter. Don't touch the focus that's actually physically on your lens. You start focusing directly with this. Now, just like the Suray adapter, you do have this front button here, which actually rotates the orientation of that anamorphic adapter because obviously you want your flares to be nice and horizontal to the plane and you want your lines to be nice and straight and vertical. Otherwise, if you, it is a little bit off center, it will sort of skew the lines and it won't look pretty at all. So as as soon as you screw this on as relatively as tight as possible, you hit that button and try and line it up and make it nice and straight and then you're ready to shoot. Now when it comes to lens charts, this does equate to the real world because you can actually see how the lens really actually performs in a controlled situation. So you know what you're going to be doing when you're out in the real world. If you know if you need to control the lens flaring, the chromatic aberration, if you need to you know, stop it down a little bit to try and make it a little bit sharper. So these do equate to the real world test, but real world tests obviously is the definitive answer if there's enough character for you to be able to use and obviously help tell your story. Now for the testing parameters, you can see here, we've got the Suray onto the Makey lens and we're at a little bit of an angle. So if I do miss focus, I still will hit somewhere on that chart because these are very hard to focus with. So I will hit somewhere on the chart and you still will see wherever it is focused on. And if I'm directly dead center and I do miss focus, that's when the chart can actually be a little bit inaccurate. So shooting on this angle is actually going to be much better. Now with any adapter that I've tried in the past, when it comes to sharpness, that is the con of having adapter. It's not specific to this adapter. The Suray adapter has it as well. 
And the sharpness, it actually takes a lot of the sharpness out of it. So if you do have a 50 millimeter, let's say my 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master lens, absolutely tack sharp, wide open, you throw this on, and it's actually gonna be quite soft. And uh, you can't shoot wide open. In my opinion, when it comes to that, you won't, it won't actually look quite in focus. You'll have to dial it down to maybe 1.6, 1.8, maybe even F2 is when it starts to sharpen up and get a little bit better. And obviously stopping it down to make it sharper, you're actually losing a little bit of light. So that is a little bit of a con there, but essentially what it does is takes a little bit of the 50 mil sort of epic sharpness and adds a little bit of character to it so when it comes to filmmaking a lot of filmmakers actually want to use lenses that have character that's why i bought the helios lens that's why i love using the suray anamorphic lenses because of the character that the anamorphics bring it just gives such an interesting look now when it comes to anamorphic characteristics this actually does have it it's got some pretty nice barrel distortion and the out of focus backgrounds do look actually quite nice it's just that sharpness that I'm not really a fan of. But when it comes to all your Suray anamorphic lenses, they are a T2.9. So technically you've got the space to go all the way up to roughly about a 2.8 to try and get just as sharp as the Suray lenses. But it does seem that when you use fly-by-wire or focus-by-wire lenses like the G Master lenses, even dialing it perfectly to infinity focus it doesn't seem to be crazy tack sharp even at f 2.2 or even f 2.8 and what i do have to mention is that you will probably get varying results depending on which lenses you actually use so you're just going to have to test all your lenses and see which ones actually work the best for you so now when it comes to the FX3 and FX30, they only just recently got that firmware update where you can pretty much de-squeeze the anamorphic uh, lenses in camera. And you can do 1.3 times or a two times anamorphic de-squeeze in the camera itself, which is great because 1.3 is pretty much 1.33. But the only con about that is that it removes the IBIS, which if you aren't familiar with anamorphics, when it comes to using IBIS, it doesn't look great in the corners because it does some weird warpiness uh, with most anamorphic lenses. So you generally use anamorphic lenses on cameras that don't have IBIS or you turn the IBIS off. The only company that's kind of perfected this a little bit is Lumix. They tend to uh, have the anamorphic de-squeeze in camera, plus you can tune the IBIS to say that you are using anamorphic lenses and it will adjust for that. But the movement and the motion of natural camera shake is actually quite pleasing when it comes to a nice heavier build like the FX6. But when it comes to the FX30, if you don't have steady hands, this could be quite difficult. But in saying that as well, if you don't want to have de-squeeze in camera, don't have de-squeeze in camera, put the anamorphic adapter on, have your IBIS on, but turn the IBIS down a little bit so it doesn't work too hard, um, or even just trying to make your camera a little bit heavier to counteract some of those micro jitters and movements. Now this is the Moment Anamorphic Adapter versus the Suray Anamorphic Adapter versus obviously no adapter. And you can see on the left-hand side, I did miss a little bit of focus, but you can see because I filmed on the edge, you can see where that focal point is. And it seems much sharper than the Suray version. And obviously no anamorphic lens, it is very sharp in the center there. And I was able to hit my focal point a lot better. Now, if we are to discuss the quality differences between the Moment lens and the Suray anamorphic lens, well, the Moment lens definitely does win. It has less chromatic aberration, it is a little bit sharper, and it is slightly easier to get in focus. And this one was kind of designed to be putting directly onto the Suray anamorphic lenses to give you a two times anamorphic squeeze. Now, if you are comparing these two, one of the cons does come down to the gear rings. This one doesn't actually have any gear rings at all, whereas the Suray has a standard 0.8 pitch gear ring onto it. So you can fit focus motors on there if you want. If you wanna use focus motors on the Moment, you do have to put a gearing on top of it. 
And if we're going to be comparing the flare quality, you can see the Sure lens has a bit of a blue flare. It's not as strong as their full frame anamorphics because that is what they're actually designed for to be put directly on top of those lenses, whereas the Moment lens has a nice warm flare to it. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. The link will be in the description below if you do want to check these ones out. Thank you to Try and Buy It for sending me this one uh, to do a review on. And uh, yeah, be sure to check out all my other videos. And I hope you found this useful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.